What are the different kinds of resets that can be performed for a microcontroller? Before seeing the reset types, let's talk about what happens when we perform reset on a microcontroller. So when we perform a reset, your program counter will be loaded with 0 cos 0, 0, 0, 0, where go to a statement is written. So this will redirect to the startup code and it is basically bypassing this interrupt vectors. So directly it will jump to this startup code from where after some initializations, you can call your main function from here. And that's how you'll be able to execute your main function. Now let's see about different types of resets. There are mainly five types of reset that we can perform on any microcontroller. The first one is brownout reset circuit. So it basically monitors your voltage level that is being supplied. If the voltage level falls below a certain limit, this circuit will detect it and perform reset on the microcontroller. The second type of reset that we have is power on reset. So in this case, when you remove power from the circuit and apply again the power, so upon power up, this power on reset will be performed. And if you see here, this external reset line is pulled up with VCC. So normally, when you don't provide ground to this line, this will be basically pulled up. But when you provide ground to it, this line will become low and which will cause external reset to the microcontroller. The next one is JTAG reset register. When we write logic 1 to it, your controller will go into reset state. This is done when we connect our JTAG for programming or debug. And the next type of reset is Wasdog timer reset. So with the help of Wasdog timer, we can perform reset on this microcontroller. Let's see one by one. First talk about this brownout detect reset. So the role of this brownout detect circuit is to monitor the voltage level. Suppose you have connected a battery to power up your circuit and after some time, let's say when your battery is going to be discharged, it will lose the power and after some time, this voltage level can go below some threshold. So the time when the voltage level goes below this level, this brownout detect threshold voltage level, if it goes below this threshold level, it will reset your microcontroller. As you can see, this internal reset will be applied when this voltage goes below this threshold. And when you charge your battery again, so gradually this voltage level will go up and when it crosses this limit, the upper threshold limit, so after this line, the voltage level will still be monitored for some time and after this timeout, your microcontroller will come out from the reset and can do normal operations. So here you can see after this timeout, this has come out from the internal reset. So this was about the brownout detect circuit. Please let me know in the comment box if you have any doubt for this brownout detection logic. The next one, let's see about the power on reset. So when you remove power from the circuit, so here you can see this VCC line went low here. So upon power up, reset has to be performed and your microcontroller will be in the reset state until this timeout. And after this timeout, it will again come to the normal state. This is a simple power on reset logic where you turn on the power for your circuit and reset is performed upon power on. The next one, let's see about this external reset. So in this external reset, your voltage level will be still high and this external reset can be performed from the external lines. You can consider you have two microcontrollers. One is primary microcontroller and another one you have secondary microcontroller. And let's say if you want to reset your secondary microcontroller from your primary one, so you can pull down this reset line of secondary microcontroller to low for certain time period. And this time period you can find in the specification of that microcontroller for how long you have to pull down. So when you keep this line low for certain time period, this internal reset will be performed for that. And when this reset line is pulled again from low to high state, so after this transition, your system will still be in internal reset state for this timeout value. And after this timeout, your microcontroller will again come to the normal state. This was about the external reset where you pull down the reset line of the microcontroller. And the next one we have 
the Vazdrop timer. JTAG is the basic one. You have to just change the register value there to logic one and that will work. So let's see this Vazdrop timer. So in the Vazdrop timer, what happens? You have to enable this Vazdrop and Vazdrop can be configured to either perform interrupt or to reset the microcontroller or to do both. So in Vazdrop, you can configure the timing for that. Let's say you have configured Vazdrop timer to let's say two second and you don't perform Vazdrop timer reset within that two second. It can perform either reset to the microcontroller or it can generate an interrupt or it can do both. So based on your configuration for what you have configured, let's say you have configured for reset operation. So if you don't perform Vazdrop timer reset within that configured time for the Vazdrop. So here you can see this is the Vazdrop timeout that you had configured for two seconds and you didn't perform Vazdrop timer reset within that two second. So it will be timed out and after this timeout reset will be performed. So here you can see internal reset will be performed after this timeout and the system will still be in reset state till this timeout and after this timeout it will again come to the normal state. The funda of this Vazdrop timer reset is to avoid any hang scenario. Suppose the execution has halted somewhere or running in the while loop and not performing any other task. So in that state this Vazdrop reset will be performed and it prevents from hang scenarios. So this was the quick brief about different kinds of reset performed into the microcontroller. Let's continue and implement this Vazdrop reset for our microcontroller in the next session. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay tuned and keep learning and I'll see you soon.